beautiful new car, priced between what, 700 and 900,000. I mean, who's actually going to buy this car? Is it just for the Asian market? No, I think there are collectors and enthusiasts all over the world, in the US, in Europe, in Asia, everywhere, who are really keen on having absolutely the latest, the hottest, and the absolute cutting edge technology of automotive super, super, super technology and supercars. So it's a prize model for the super rich? I think it's you need you need to have reasonable means to to be able to buy it, but that's yeah. not important. It's really important. I, first of all, we know that there are enough people who encourage us to deliver this car, to do the car, to put it on the road. When we showed it in Paris as a concept car, it's it's all about creating sort of the inspiration to bring the people together to develop that technology into something that is really sort of, it, it's working. Well, it's, can, we, can we expect this kind of inspiration, as you put it, to transcend itself across the Jaguar brand and, and the Land Rover brand? Is this a statement of where you want to go with the Jaguar brand? Um, in multiple ways, yes. Right. First of all, Jaguar is about cutting edge technology. It's not about the past, it's about the future. It's about really sensing what the future customer will be looking for. I think he or she will be looking for hybridization, i.e. the combination of electric and combustion powertrains for better, for lower CO2, better fuel economy, but equally for still exciting performance. And that sort of combination, we need a different combination for Land Rover as we will need for Jaguar. Sure. But for Jaguar, for sports cars, you need that type of strong and powerful electric motors combined with a good and strong and efficient um, combustion engine and the way how to combine it that's what we learn in this project and that that's one of the many lessons will, will, which will ultimately transcend into the serious production cars. How quickly do you think we can see this kind of technology roll out across across the across the brands? You will see hybrid technology in in, in our products in serious large volume serious production volumes in about two years time. So, and then subsequently many more applications of that technology. Now, there have been reports that you're about to invest five billion pounds in the, your UK plants. Can you confirm that or? We, we are talking about a substantial investment in new product, which includes sort of plant investment in plants. So the, a five billion roundabout number, it's call it one billion plus or significantly plus per annum right. over the course of the next years, round about the number we plan to invest in product engineering and in the investment in our plants to deliver these projects. And when we look at the breadth of product that Jaguar actually has, I mean, you, you've made it very clear. I want to go head to head with BMW, Audi, and really stand up and make that challenge. How do you do that? Do you broaden the Jaguar product range? BMW has a one series. What can we expect in terms of the broadening of the range, if at all? Let, let me correct one impression. We are not saying we want to be head in head in terms of volume. Okay. We're clearly in a different volume game and our aspiration is not to beat BMW or Audi on volume. I think wherever we compete, we want to be absolutely able to compete and I think we are already. And we see opportunities to compete in further segments, which will over time enlarge our volume. But we want to do it profitably, uh, profitably yeah. and we want to do it professionally and to deliver the very best for our customers. So it's not about volume, it's about really enthusing and exciting our customers. Do you think the price range that you've got at the moment will allow you to achieve those incremental volume increases that you talk about? We see both brands have have me sort of legs or have opportunities for ex to expand their price range up at the upper end okay. but certainly also to go further down into smaller cars i mean the trend is towards somewhat more compact and smaller cars and you know that we will be launching the evoke which is one of these steps towards a smaller range rover yes. we could we're looking into a possibly similar step for jaguar and from there we have to talk in a few years time and in terms of assembly in China and Latin America, can you give us some sense of timing and when that might happen? Our number one priority is to look into China. It's currently the growth market. Uh, we, are not there, we are not assembling manufacturing vehicles there yet. We're currently looking into shall we do it, shall we not do it. Um, that's certainly priority number one. Right. We have started to assemble vehicles in India. Um, India is still a small premium market. We we believe we just it will grow significantly. That's another opportunity for us. 
give me a sense of how the Jaguar brand is positioned in India. Is that doing well because of its association with the UK, the historical British association, or is it about the brand itself within India? We, we, we are tremendously encouraged by the reaction of our Indian customers and the Indian public to our brands. They, they like the brands, they have a proximity, they have a feel for the brand, they're interested in the brand. We are a little bit latecomers in India. Some of our competitors have been there and already manufacturing a broader range of vehicles, which makes them more competitive. But we still see tremendous sort of encouragement to be bolder in India. So we are currently recruiting dealers. First of all, we need dealers. So we had one, now we already are close to 10, and soon we have 20 and 25 dealers in all major cities. And that will allow us to really sort of drive our volume in India. Let's just look at the global auto industry. The US and the European autos have, they've had, they've had a good run recently. They've turned around from, from the nadir. How sustainable is this upturn in the US and in European autos, in your opinion, at the moment? Look, we all know the European economy itself is a bit of a, a checkered game. It um, has some strength like Germany and as we have still a very weak economy. So I'm, I'm not, the European economy is not driving our success. We're doing, we're doing all reasonably well in Europe. The US is slowly recovering but it's not doing great, but we expect that the U.S. will continue to recover step by step. And with this, also the premium market will continue to, to recover and to grow. China is currently the growth market, albeit it might not grow at the but same pace But do you not worry anymore. about a slowdown in China? I mean, they're trying to raise interest rates and they are trying to slow things down. Is that a concern I, I th for you? I think, I think we, are, we are acutely aware that it might slow down, but we we trust and we believe it will continue to grow and that's important. And one final question, India's raising interest rates, inflation's a concern for them. Do you have concerns about what's happening with monetary policy in India? I mean, we understand why the government is doing that. Um, we simply hope that um, the, the, the gorgeous growth story, which is so important for India, we have to create jobs, we have to get the poor people out of their poverty, that this growth story is not, is not spoiled. And um, we trust that the government is able to run this fine line between throttling too much and still keeping the growth story going, that they get that right.